Hi everyone, welcome to Education Alchemist YouTube channel. The following video is an outcome of uh, a workshop that we did at the OEB Global Virtual Experience in Berlin. Uh, it's a conference that happened in December 2020 and we did a workshop with uh, about 40 participants um, about the uh, futures of education post-Covid and this video is uh, Rod Angered, our visual director, um, talking about the rich picture that he created based on all their ideas. So hi everyone, um, thank you very much for taking part. Um, uh, here with us we've got two of the participants who contributed originally to the event which was five days ago as part of the online educa um, and we were very joyful it was actually quite a joyful and rather rapid process that we went through um, and this is a follow-up to show some of the imagery that's come out of those discussions um, this is what we did there were there were five groups i think with between about eight people in each um, and each one of them had the chance to discuss two topics well, um, this is uh, this is the result of the, the the massive contribution that this group gave me to work with. I mean, um, I, I think it's fairly rare for me to get as much wonderful material as this. So I hope uh, that I've done it proud. This is the valley of 2026, and the river that runs through the middle of it is the Foresight River, and at the head of the valley looking a bit like a, I don't know what, a bit of a Christmas cake, I suppose, with icing on it, is the year 2026, which is the, the head of the valley. Beyond it, you'll notice the next decade range, implying that there is a future beyond 2026, and we all need to start to think about what it is, even though we took you from today into 2026 to think about um, things. So uh, generally speaking, I've tried to reflect as many of the, the things that were given to me, even in this general picture. So one of the things that came across to me was the need for more infrastructure, connectivity, um, and, and pathways. So I've tried to do that in as many different ways as my artistic ability will allow for. I've put bridges in across the river, I put lots of Wi-Fi towers in to connect everybody together. And almost everybody, I think, is walking around with a, a laptop or a, a PDA or a, a smartphone of some sort or other. Um, the land is divided into the five regions, territories. There is learner land at the top. Um, next to that is the learning technology domain. And beyond that is the teacher's realm. And on this side of the river, our side of the river, first there is place, and lastly, there is the knowledge realm. Um, so as a general uh, image, pretty much it, except to say that every single one of those territories has a, a, a pennant or a flag that they rally round, if you like, and we'll come to each of those in time. But those very much reflect the ethos of the territory, if you like, the people that work and live them. Okay, so here we are in learner land. Um, you'll notice that these guys are using the flagpole as their wireless mast, pretty smart. Um, you will notice there is the maze. It was the one clear idea that came through for learners is that there was a certain amount of confusion. Um, and so I depicted as best I could the maze. You'll notice that I put one learner just behind that saying, let's have no more confusion. Um, and I think that's a really good idea. And maybe by 2026, we can expect that that confusion will have been removed somewhat. Um, so it's about to be bulldozed flat because it's about time that confusion was removed. Um, and you'll notice that these two bulldozers are driverless. They're automated. They're controlled by wireless uh, connectivity. So they're going to demolish this and leave us with fresh territory to build a new one. Their pennant, my time, my location, my mode. 
This is to reflect that learners are, are going to become consumers if they aren't already. It's very important, therefore, that we recognize, if you like, the potential and the power that they hold. Um, sitting outside the maze are three of their uh, three of the people. One is sat in a chair at the end of a pathway uh, with his laptop connected to a mast, and he is connected across the river to place. And you'll notice that his first message is, I can work with you. So that means that they are connected in a different way to what they've been used to. The two people emerging from the maze, well, one of them says, I want a new way, and is about to cross the bridge, the first piece of infrastructure into the land called place. And the second one reflects another important message that came to me, which is about how mobile students and learners need to be. So I want mobility. Um, you'll notice off to the left, uh, beyond the maze, to the left, to the west, I suppose, uh, is a pathway over a bridge which takes us into the next territory. Um, and that is just to reflect the fact that there are technology access pathways. OK, so we've come across the bridge now, and essentially we're in the land of place. Um, the true characteristics of this, uh, this area were collaborative working. And I've put several people round what I consider to be my best effort at a Knights of the Round Table table, working together, mast in the middle, broadcasting away um, to anybody who can connect to them. Very collaborative message that came across for place, which is, I think, is in itself is a massive shift. You know, it's not an it's not necessarily any more physical. It's um, it's a place in the digital ether and people can join and people can work there. Next door, uh, but still in place, communities of practice. Um, and I love the notion that even though we're talking about a time in the future, I can put up these somewhat medieval looking tents to depict an image. And I kind of like that, that, uh, that opportunity, if you like. Community of practice, their pennant, their rally point is online social presence. And that kind of says it all for the new place, as far as I can see. Now, I've got two territories here. Uh, so they're joined together, but I've just taken the one image of them um, for now. So the first one is the learning technology domain. And way in the background, you can see Mount AI, uh, reflecting the fact that artificial intelligence at this time will be somewhat more well-developed than it currently is, and it's doing remarkably well even now. There be robots in this land. There be robots in this land. And um, some of the groups reflected the fact that they could probably do quite a bit in terms of language development in, in students. And so I put two of them in the middle. And one is saying, parlez-vous français? And the other one is saying, no, hablas espanol. So they're talking different languages, but maybe not talking to each other <laughs> too well. Um, a, a reminder for us all, I guess. Right in the bottom, bus just by the bridge, is the big data center. I've drawn it as a rubrics cube, um, full of challenge, stacked and built um, to provide lots of storage, and I've called it the big data center. Some of the robots are engaged in taking cubes of data across the bridge into the land of knowledge, which we'll come to later. At the top, uh, winging their way or its way across Mount AI is a STEM avatar heading directly for the learner land to help them out. But also you'll notice that just beyond 3D Falls, which divides learning technology domain from the teacher's realm, you'll notice a bridge called Exports, where some of this technology is exported to different places. And in this case, it's an avatar that has been built in learning technology domain that is available for the teachers. And it says, I am avatar. I can provide learning and teaching in seven subjects. Their flag, their pennant is a con complex uh, one. On the left-hand side of the pennant, you'll see content. 
and on the far right, quality. Um, and in between that, data and video were the things that they wanted me to reflect um, as being the main contributors of, of content, but that there needs to be a new framework of quality for those, those content domains, and also the need for it to be searchable. So that is their pennant. Again, using their, their mast as a, as a wireless um, broadcaster. Below that, uh, both two representations of 3D. They wanted me to reflect 3D, so I've put the 3D falls, and I've also put 3D down in the foreground. You can see that one teacher is experiencing virtual reality and likes the notion very much and hopefully thinks that their students will love that VR too. Um, the signpost, exponents of multidiscipline, and my apologies to everyone, this is meant to be, I think, phenomenon learning and not phenomenal, although I'm fairly certain most teachers also provide phenomenal learning as well, so my mistake. And leaning against the teacher's realm letters is the teacher, the sage, pondering what their future may be. Still a need for me, somebody said, there was. Am I going to be a tutor or a coach? And am I going to be a learner content manager instead? So there we are, that's teacher learning now, or teacher's realm and the learning technology domain, which really just leaves the knowledge domain to look at. Next slide, please, thank you. Now, I wanted to provide a bridge, a link from learning technology and data to the, to the main thrust of the knowledge uh, region, which was that if you take data and interpret it and process it, you can create information. And if you then think about that critically, you can in fact create knowledge. So on the left-hand side of this zone, you'll see just that happening. The robots bringing the cubes of data across and leaving them in the assembly point or in the assembly yard. And they are organized and processed and you begin to see form take, take, take place. And by the time you get to the third part of that strip, you can see that the, the, the cubes all say knowing. Just to the right of that are two features that are quite important. The first, breaking out of the hillside uh, is the knowledge, uh, the knowledge um, source, the spring. Um, I think in ancient history, it was a Pyrian spring, I believe, my history is not good. But anyway, that was meant to represent it, uh, the spring of knowledge running down the hillside um, and into the river Foresight. The guys and girls to the, just to the west of the river there are actually embedding practice. Uh, I have to tell you, this was a bit of a challenge for a while. It took me a little while to work out what exactly I was going to do to reflect and show you embedding of practice. But in the end, I decided that what they'd be doing is laying the letters of practice in the sand, um, surrounding that with their cubes to frame it, and then cementing those letters in place and thus embedding them forever, if you like. So there's a cement mixer, there's a guy carrying cement to the workers who are moving the letters into place and making sure that they, they, they fit in place properly. Again, the knowledge region, um, their title, very much assembled from those data cubes. Their pennant, the five C's, I love this, challenge, consumer creator, co-creation, context, and connotation. Um, so that is a very quick scamper through this wonderful territory that you all helped me to create. Um, normally I'm struggling and have to be very inventive. In this one, I have to tell you both, I could have done with four sheets of paper that were much larger just to try and get this all together. There was so much given to me, it was a relatively easy task. Um, having said that, it took me about four days to get it really up to this presentable stage. Not that I mind that one bit. Uh, I feed off of this sort of contribution. 
and I hope that what it does uh, is allow you to reflect on the power of somebody doing that on your behalf, because it is quite a potent tool. I believe in it. The statements are all very long in the tooth now, but it does speak a thousand words, always an image does. It conveys a lot of things that would be difficult maybe to talk about and express necessarily, and an image can do what words can't do because they're far too, um, they're far too meaningful. But with the artist license, you can do almost whatever you like. So thank you both very much. Thanks for watching. We'd like to thank the OEB conference and all the participants that took part in the workshop that helped create this rich picture. If you'd like to visit us at our website, um, it is educationalchemist.com. And if you'd like to watch more of our YouTube videos, just go to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.